Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to the Arizona Real Estate News. I didn't know what else to call it. Maybe, you know, just housing <laughs> stuff. Uh, Arizona housing stuff. Crap. Arizona housing <laughs> stuff, you know. So <laughs> we're just, uh, this is where we get together as a bunch of friends here and go over what we saw for the week and kind of what we think is where it's going. And we definitely know where it's where it's going. We look at today's numbers. And uh, before we get doing that, I want to remind everybody this is sponsored by our friends at Red Hog Media, not only just for real estate, but for small businesses, uh, family photos, real estate agents, if you need headshots, and they do everything. So they do drones, um, they do video. So they're, they've got, and they also do short-term rentals as well, vacation rentals, Airbnbs. So at their when you sign up for their services and the code, just put in Rick helps and you'll get 10% off. How cool is that? So, <laughs> but a um, couple side notes. Uh, we are going to host a meet and greet for our YouTube subscribers. And uh, I've put a post, a poll in the community tab saying, where would you like to see it? Gilbert, Tempe or Phoenix? I've only got 23 votes so far. So that's really not enough to, to get a trend. I, I kind of like Tempe because it's got um, a really neat spot up there at the yard where we can host this. So we just give the opportunity for us to meet our subscribers and uh, not other realtors. I mean, I'd like to see you, but you know, <laughs> so, was that 23 or 2.3 million? Was that a 2.3 uh, million? Funny? I'm sorry. Pat. Yeah. I got some. And uh, Pat says he's going to get his leisure suit and bring his karaoke machine. So uh, <laughs> I have a meeting with my attorney later to see how we can stop that. But uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, so I guess I can best describe. Um, oh, before I get that, as long as we're on weird stories. Um, I was at a showing yesterday. It was in Mesa. And uh, we had, you know, I don't know, 3.30 to 4 o'clock was our time that we put in on showing time. And I'm, I'm in there showing it. And. Another agent comes in from Redfin and his client had already got there early. So we're just shooting the breeze and he leaves. And then pretty soon the doorbell rings and I open it up and there's this little realtor there. And she goes, you listing agent. I go, no, no, I'm buying agent. I've got some clients in here. She goes, four o'clock is my time. <laughs> and I said, well, it's four minutes after four and we're just about wrapping it up here. And she just, just mad. I mean, my clients are going, yeah, we let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that was agreeing to me. Four o'clock was my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Thanks for I've been there, done that. I've so had that. Other, yeah. Let me guess. There was it. There was there thirty other people um, out the front yard waiting to see the house too. Yeah, she was so by herself. To... She was all by herself. She wasn't even meeting the client there. And then another couple of realtors walked up when I was leaving. I, so I couldn't believe how much traffic there actually was. And I, I said, um. Don't go in now. That's her time. <laughs> so, <laughs> the things we see out there. So, um, seven day moving average is everything is still trending down. And as we talk, you know, the closer we get to the holidays, the lower these numbers will get. So we're, we're, uh, we got a little slight tip up in new listings and it's only because we had a few more back on market by maybe a hundred and back on market seems to be driven by transactions that have fallen out. Uh, but our, the number of sales that we have, homes going under contract on the yellow line, is still hovering in that 2,300 range, which is painstakingly low. And uh, um, so I, I don't see that getting better anytime soon. And one, one of the things that we're seeing here, look at all the cancellations that we've had year to date, 11,040 compared to 8,000 for all of last year. These are people that put their homes on the market and said, well, that didn't go as I thought it would. And then so they're, so they're done. The other thing that sticks out to me is average list price per square foot. Now, um, if you're going to have a crash, this line has to continue doing what it started to do right here. But it didn't. It's down here and it's stalled. It's that this is average price per square foot list price. So it everything i'm seeing is in this holding pattern now for those that say i'm looking in the rearview mirror this is this week 
So this isn't old data. This is this week and the seven day moving averages today. So I look at um, recent data and try to extrapolate any kind of a trend. Now, going forward, what can we expect? Well, there's all kinds of numbers that we have to look at, right? And uh, and one of those numbers is, uh, you know, mortgages and th where they're getting getting us beat up here pretty bad. I'm surprised at how much traffic we do have out there, despite the fact that mortgage rates are high. And actually, and I don't know if you guys see it too, but my website traffic has really increased because I think people are waiting. I think, well, I'm hearing real estate's going down. Let me let me get on a website and check and see what I'm seeing. And uh, so, you know, it's it's a it's just going to be a really tough couple of months. But November, December is when we finish all of our continuing education, right? Oh, I wait till the last week. <laughs> yeah mine's due at the end of december so mr pat can you tell yeah. me this chart is uh it tells the story doesn't it it's ugly this is the staircase climb up to heaven <laughs> <laughs> try the reverse yeah. actually this is the you got to reverse it the staircase climb down to hell uh yeah we're, <laughs> right now i mean we're at the 10 years at 420 um, today we're seeing this choppiness again. This it, the the five and a half percent coupon is down thirty seven basis points. It was down, for, you know. This gives me <coughs> the um, still getting over the cold, but this gives me a trend. You know, starts at nine thirty. You can see this is what I track during the day. Obviously, is uh, you know you can see the momentum turning quick. I mean, this is amazing. This is almost like a stock trading chart. Some days when the numbers are flipping around, um, especially when the Fed's obviously you could see it changing here, but um, it's. I mean, there's no sense beating a dead horse. I mean, it's the same story, different day with the rates. I mean, they're already at, they're right now we're at 20 year high and um, there's just really no scapegoat right now. Um, the rate momentum has been moment, has been negative. I mean, honestly, you know, this last, this has been since uh, August 3rd. So August, September, we're almost looking into November. So for three months, this has just been a staircase climb, but this is one year. I mean, if you look at um, two year, right here i mean you look at this date right here this is january 3rd right right here so it's been um really this whole year has just been a circus you know we've had a couple of you know reprieves back in june and this is where we kind of saw that um that little surge again you know uh, buyers come back in you know when rates kind of dip down june july you know right in here um, but then obviously, like you said, August 2nd, <clears throat> this has been just, this has been unprecedented. But move. that, but at the top there where, where you got that, where it spiked up and then it came down, that's during the, uh, uh, all the chaos in the UK for that one week. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, yeah. Right, right there. Right, yeah. yeah. Where it came up yeah, right, right here. Down. And that prime yeah. minister resigned this morning after 45 days. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Really? That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, you know, you know I, I think everybody here. just. Everybody's kind of tired of the the sell off. I mean, there's a lot of weariness weariness out there right now. I mean, it's um, and uh, I mean, Barry B, you know, who I follow, obviously, this is what his site is, the Mortgage Back or MBS Highway. <clears throat> you know, he feels that the risk inflation is going to come down here in November, December, and he was a couple of days ago. He was saying that there's if things do ease up, he goes. Next year, he said, you know, there's this one gentleman interviewing him. He said, you see, you see rates in the fives? He goes, technically, I could see rates go back into the fours, high fours, you know, next year. And I think that's, um, you know, I, if we saw know, that. I, 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 I don't. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm going to watch it closely and listen to him because he's smarter than me. But I just don't see it I, because of the level of debt that we have. Yeah. The investors are demanding a return on their investment that's higher than the rate of refl inflation. And, mm -hmm. and I know that the CPI number is probably going to come down, but I think, you know, listening to it, you're watch Daniel DiMartino booth with Quill intelligence. Yes. Yeah. She, she used to be the Dallas fed chair. And a couple of days ago, she said, you know, the, the, the pressure for rates is going to probably remain for the next couple of years. She goes for one simple fact that chairman Powell can't drill for oil. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, she, she I agree with you. I mean, I think 
I think inflation, there's a uh, Harvard, you know, obviously uh, there's economists out there. It says the inflation is built in the rates for a long time. And he said he doesn't see rates coming down for a while. He's just because rates are going up. They could say they could stay there and be sustained for they're not just going to come down, you know, the next right. couple months. So, I mean, it's going to get I mean, it's we're in this second, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to segment it mentally so I can I can say, OK, this period of time is what we're in right now versus because I think you just drive yourself nuts trying to predict day to day, week to week, month to month. Yeah. And I oh, think yeah. you have to look at, I think you have to stretch out the time frame that you're looking at and say, okay, like I said, 18, 2019, 2021, we were in this period and end of 20, or really realistically, the end of 21, beginning of 22 is now we're in this period where how long does it last? And like I said, Barry, he said, Abib has said that this is a bridge we have to cross. How long is the bridge? I don't know. It could be a couple miles long, but um, you know, I, you know, this sh too shall pass, but it's probably gonna get uglier before it gets better. And um, right. I agree with you. I know what you're saying, Rick. I mean, um, he's just say, looking at it from a short-term trading, bond trading yeah. standpoint. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I agree. We have long-term problems, but um, it's gonna be, um, you know, something that we have to, you know, the, the only thing that I'm trying to do with people is, uh, you know, that I think that, like I said, I mentioned the last couple of shows, a two one buy down, because it does make sense, you know, for one or two years, you give yourself a little uh, time frame to, um, Get a little bit rate. Well, what's hurting you now, though, right, is the volatility. Oh, I mean, yeah. If, yeah. If, if, if it was trending in one direction, it's easy to look at rates and quote and fees. But when it's just up, down, up, down, I mean, you're probably looking at a loan and saying, OK, I can get you this rate and the and the fees fifteen hundred dollars. And then by three o'clock, it's now three thousand dollars. And then it's mm -hmm. right. And then so, so, you know, Pat, what's your rate? I don't know. What time is it? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, Ruby, your buyer, your buyer traffic, uh, you say it's pretty, pretty slow for you right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not a lot of buyers out there reaching out right now. So we're just trying to get back to old school stuff and um, contacting people in our uh, database. Yeah, so. trying to say, hey, uh, Jackie, you seeing mm -hmm. the same thing? Um, I've had a couple pick up here. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, the thing is, is I've got a couple that have picked up that two, three weeks ago, they were walking a fine line on where the rates were. And they're sending me properties today saying that at the same price point. And I'm like, hey, we need to have a conversation with your lender again, because rates have gone up still, you know, and it's just it's insanity of what's happened. I, I was saying earlier, Rick, to you, you know, in all my years of doing this, usually you can get a feel for the market if you've been in it long enough. And even when we had the crash in 2008, it didn't happen that fast. It happened over a four or five period, four or five year period of time. I mean, it, I, real estate does not typically move fast. It's a lagging indicator of, you know, what's happening. And to see what's happened in just the last six months is it's crazy. I would have never predicted this ever. Well, well, I think I, you know, I was, I was hoping I, for a, a level of this. Um, so that, you know, sure. but I I'd love to see appreciation get to two to three or 4%. Um, that's on, normal on house prices that are, they're normal. I'd like to see an adjustment so that affordability can raise its head again. But before we get there, you know, it, it's, it's going to bounce around all over the place. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm not looking at this at a position, as a position from a realtor, it says, oh, no, business is going to be so bad. It just, yeah, it is what it is. And, right. uh, and <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm not complaining. I think uh, um, I also read and I realize there's a lot of people out there. This is a crash. You don't see it. Well, no, I don't yet. Um, you know, it's it's uh, there's a lot of things that can cause a crash, you know, looking forward and guessing and projecting. And there's a lot of things that say that that we won't. Um, right it's a mess out there. And, um, I'd say watch England, uh, their inflation rate was 11% this month. Yeah. That's and crazy. They, uh, and the new prime minister came in and, and started her own level of quantitative easing to save the pensions and everything went so haywire that she said, I, well, I guess I'll just quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to jump in. I'm, I think, Honestly, I mean, not to count point counterpoint, Jackie, but I, I think you kind of could see it in January, February, March, April, May, when you had people bidding thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars over the right. offer price. That was right. Me. I mean, yeah. you see that? That's I mean, 
you knew something was around the corner. I mean, it didn't. Absolutely. I mean, I mean that, that um, you know, so, but that, I, I mean, I, that's the, that's the, that's the inverse relationship to the overbidding of 30, 40, $50,000. Now we're seeing the flip side of it. And that's right. what people brought them upon themselves. I mean, um, you know, which nobody, I, I, I think the writing was on the wall or the handwriting was on the wall. It was just a matter of when. I, I agree, Pat. And the thing was that craziness couldn't continue. I mean, it just, it was ridiculous. Our market was going to implode if it continued. I think what needed to happen is in 2021, I think the Fed needed to step up then and start raising rates some and do it gradual. Right. You know, I feel bad for these first time home buyers that were sidelined because of all the investors, because of the cheap money they could get and they could beat everybody out. And those first time home buyers signed new leases and those leases are coming up now and now they're stuck and the rents have gone up so much. And I mean, we're seeing some easement in the rents, but the Fed really needed to start with the rates in 2021 and do it at a more gradual level so that people could adjust. And, you know, I mean, when they raise rates like this, it takes a little bit of time for people to get used to it and settle in. I, I, I didn't, I hated the craziness that we had that that was heartbreaking for so many clients that Ruby and I had to be beat out and, you know, people having to say, Oh, I got to offer 50,000 over. Or there's 20 other offers. I mean, no, yeah. nobody except for these and i don't mean anything bad about any agents but except for these agents that jumped in the market during that time and wanted to make a quick buck you no, we didn't want to sustain that we didn't want that happening we wanted a nice balanced market and i think that could have happened in a way that was a lot easier on the consumer yeah i don't see us crashing i don't think that's going to happen i think we're going to adjust and come down to where we need to be i just think the fed should have started this in 2021 and i'm done sorry <laughs> well here's where we are today here's the average monthly sales price so we've erased this is january so we've erased the gains that we we had yeah. this year but now guess what look at it, it blipped up a little bit so this is going to be kind of a, a non-event the next couple months not really going to show us anything i did see a I'm in a Facebook group called Arizona Real Estate Mastermind. And and it a lot of times can be very helpful because somebody will talk about something that's going on in a transaction that you've probably never seen before. You know, what do I do here? What's the law? And so you can get a lot of really good advice. But then sometimes you see things that just make you shake your head. Like somebody put a meme up yesterday and said, hey, guys, what's going on with mortgage rates? I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing this what a month i don't know i mean what's going on <laughs> like a, a, call your lender <laughs> yeah. i didn't even read the comments i didn't want to yeah. i just got like i just uh, scroll by scroll by <laughs> so it's it's a time you know like pat you just said earlier you know you, you can't just watch this day to day you've got to say where where do i everybody right now is wondering what january is going to bring they're wondering, you know, what's going to happen in November. Will that change the trajectory of anything if we end up with uh, a change in parties? And and what will happen in January when normally a whole bunch of listings come on board? Will they this year? One of the things that I'm seeing in some of the data is the over 55 communities are just stalled. They, they're normally not affected by this, but they're, uh, and I think it's because, you know, some of their retirement savings got, slap mm -hmm. pretty hard but it's it's deader in the over 55 communities than it is pretty much anywhere else in the valley unless it's in that two to three hundred range yeah well you know that that's, that's true but the but the um overall their inventory has spiked more than mm -hmm. than any other any other market and uh, normally like in sun lakes in january you would see you know 125 listings just in that small community and we're we're way past that right now and it's only november i can't even imagine what it's going to look like and and i saw that again in the facebook group and i go oh wait till the snowbirds get here it doesn't work that way mm. and they don't just show up in january with checkbooks so that that market's going to continue to be slow as well until we see some improvement in the uh um you know the stock market some and so that's another number that everybody has to watch so it's going to be a very very interesting holiday season now on a on a bright note, if you're out there looking, uh, we are seeing still 
Open Door has 1,500 homes on the market. And uh, and you know they're going to want to move those by Christmas. Didn't they only mm -hmm. sell like 200 and something last month? Yeah, they didn't sell very many because yeah. um, they're still hovering around 1,500 because they're still putting homes on that, that they bought and remodeled. And, and They're uh, still buying. Yeah, they're buying a lot more conservatively, though, and then they yeah. jacked up their fee. So, mm -hmm. you know, because so they're... I just talked to somebody yesterday that is under contract with a new build. And I think she said, um, gosh, I, I don't think it was Pulte. God, why can't I remember? But anyways, she was saying that Open Door bought her house. Um, they have a connection with the builder that she stays in the house until the builder's got it done December or January. So they've been under contract for three months or something with the new build and, um, open door bought their house and she still can't believe what they paid for it. But anyway, yeah, so, I so didn't realize they a, too. and she's probably paying open door rent. So she's got a lease back agreement. Probably. Yeah. I didn't get to ask too many questions. Yeah. It makes you wonder how long they, well, I guess a cash buyer, they can stay there as long as open door lets them. Mm -hmm. So pretty yeah. good deal. Yeah, if heard, you can get it. I heard that 72 sold is going to uh, change your name to name to 960 sold. <laughs> <laughs> now they'll, they'll probably divide it by something to come up with something more catchy that that's because uh, that's um that's 40 days so you figure the house is an average house on the market now 40 days so 40 sold 72 72 to 960 sold <laughs> their commercials have slowed down have you noticed but they are the preferred um uh realtor choice of the cardinals <laughs> yeah yeah way out <laughs> I don't want to beat him up. I don't want to get sued. So okay. <laughs> neither do we. I just my point is, I mean, my point is, I think <clears throat> some of these companies that have the models to so so quickly, I'll be actually <coughs> open door is gonna be an interesting model to watch because obviously they're a publicly traded company and they have to buy and sell homes um to keep their business going, keep their business model going, make you know, make money or lose money. And it's gonna be interesting to see how they do in this model with uh prices basically on the momentum is going the other way i saw an article this morning on globally it had a list of the cities around the world that had the biggest real estate bubble and uh we did not make it number one was toronto oh i believe that number two was hamburg germany and we we weren't even a we didn't even show up on that list globally so we just don't it's this as much, you know, doom and gloomers, you, you didn't hit the list. So, <laughs> so, well, look, everybody, we will see you next week and uh, remind everybody uh, to be on the lookout for um, an RSVP sheet. Uh, once we figure out where we're going to have our meet and greet, we'd love to meet you. Uh, I get to bump into people from time to time that just come up and say hi. And I have no idea who they are until they tell me. And uh, so I thought it'd just be fun if we could just go somewhere and, and uh, buy some people some drinks and a little bit of food and laugh and chuckle and take some pictures. And, and the second week in November just seemed like a good time to do it. So while business slows down, we just have more time to gather. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Well, everybody take on the day and have a great week. Thank, Thank you much. You. Bye. 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 Bye.